Meal prepping your cat's food at home can be quick and easy. I spend about 20 minutes a week on Jericho's raw food diet, and I personally think that the work is worth it because Jericho stands in a much healthier life and he loves it. Hey friends, it's Jess and Jericho, and first we'll talk about my ingredients for Jericho's homemade cat food. So before I made this change, I was buying everything online. He was eating a, a ground raw diet, so it was raw, but I wanted to offer chunks of meat and raw meaty bones, so he's actually chewing on stuff. I would order about two or three months worth in advance. There would be lots of freezer burn, and it's technically not that fresh. So now what I do is I buy whole prey online, but I only buy one month's worth. So I have to fulfill the shipping requirements for the weight, especially in the warmer months but at least it's one month instead of three months. Then I go to the farmer's market where I can get fresh chunks of meat and organs. So right now I'm buying chunks of boneless meat. I'm buying beef, turkey, chicken, just whatever I'm gonna eat that week. I share it with Jericho. <laughs> and I'm also giving him heart. Next, I'm going to slowly introduce liver and other secreting organs. And then after that, I'm going to introduce more raw meaty bones. I'm also giving Jericho eggs from the farmer's market. And I like going to the farmer's market because it's fresh and I'm supporting local businesses. I'm supporting family businesses. And I just feel better about it because I know that they raise their animals sustainably and humanely. If this isn't an option for you though, you can, you can go to the grocery store or the the butcher shop or the meat market, whatever works best for you. Getting your meat at the grocery store, it's fit for human consumption, so that's still much better than commercial cat food. I buy the hearts once a month and portion out Jericho's servings for the week, and then I eat the rest. I actually just started eating hearts, and I wanna continue eating more of these parts. Let me know in the comments if you do this also. I would love to know how you prepare it and what your thoughts are on it. So now let's talk about Jericho's homemade cat food recipes. Before I made these changes, I was using a raw food premix called Al Nutrient. Now, I don't think there's anything wrong with Al Nutrient, especially for beginners. It is human grade quality ingredients, but technically at the end of the day, some of those ingredients are synthetic, AKA man-made and not natural. Again, it's great for beginners if you just wanna have something that's simple and easy, but I personally wanna keep upgrading Jericho's food and get as close as possible to whole prey and raw chunks of meat and meaty bones. Now Jericho is eating two whole prey quail a week, one whole baby chick a week, and then I fill the rest of his daily portions with chunks of meat, and then those hearts, a little bit of stinky green tripe, and one whole egg yolk a week. And to balance out this prey model raw diet, I used Hair Today's raw food ratio calculator. So what you're going to do is under animal type, choose cat, and then it will tell you the goal for the meat, bones, and organs, low and the high percent. So you wanna be within those ranges. And as you add products to the drop down menus on the left where it says food details, those goals and the graph underneath will update based on the products that you enter. I have another video that goes way more in depth in this, so I'll put that in the description below. You can check it out after watching this video. So for Jericho, it shows that I still need more bone at the moment. And another con here is that I'm using freeze-dried organ treats instead of fresh organ meat. But I'm still in the transition phase, and I want you to know that you don't have to be 100% perfect right off the bat. Even when you're transitioning from whatever you are now to prey model raw, you should be going with whole chunks of meat first, then adding raw meaty bones, and then going to the secreting organs, because secreting organs are super rich. You don't want to do too many changes at once anyway. Your cat's system can't handle all of these rapid changes, so don't feel overwhelmed and feel like you have to do you know, everything all at once. Baby steps, <laughs> baby steps. I also created a spreadsheet that tells me the percent of each ingredient because I wanna make sure that the muscle meat category, which includes heart and tripe, is more broken up. So instead of seeing it as one whole total of 83%, I want to see how much heart and how much tripe is in there so I can keep it within a good range. Then I convert everything to ounces because I weigh in ounces for Jericho's daily portions meals and to see how much of each ingredient I need for each day. If you'd rather purchase a meat grinder and then use a recipe that uses, puts all of the ingredients in the grinder and then you mix it up that way, that's perfectly fine. Again, that's 
still way better than commercial cat food. But ideally, you know, long-term goals, you would want to feed your cat chunks of meat and bone because that's better for mental stimulation. It's also better for their teeth. Give me a polydactyl thumbs up if this is helpful so far. Some more cat parents that want to feed homemade cat food can find this video. Thank you. So now for my meal prep supplies, I have a food grain silicone mat and I use this to keep my counter sanitary. So I put everything on top of the mat and while I portion if a piece of meat falls on the mat, I can still use it because the mat is clean and it also prevents the meat from falling on my counter. So that makes cleanup super easy. I also use nitrile gloves, a digital food scale. This food scale is for humans, doesn't matter. You can use whatever food scale you want. I like to use the digital one. Also weighs in grams and pounds. I use it to weigh Jericho. <laughs> All of my meal prep supplies are in the description below. I also use a stainless steel plate to weigh everything, kitchen shears, and a craft scissor to tr trim the quail feathers fork and spoon to grab each piece of meat, and glass Tupperware containers. I use glass because glass is much better than plastic. Plastic traps bacteria even with regular washing. But again, don't feel like you have to go all in 100% in the beginning. If all you have right now is plastic, preparing your raw cat's food and storing it in plastic is still a step up from feeding dry food or wet food. So use what you have for now and upgrade when you can. For example, with those, those glass containers, they were like $7 each at my grocery store. I bought one a month and then, and then I got to seven and then I stopped. If you're shopping for a meat grinder, make sure that it can handle bones because a lot of recipes will include bone because that's the best source of calcium for cats. I've included meat grinders in those shopping lists in the description with my meal prep supplies, but take a look again to make sure that the current reviews still say that those can handle bones. Then when I'm portioning out his food, I like to tackle the whole meat cuts first because this is from my personal stash of meat. So I like to cut these up before I cut up the quail to keep my meat sanitary. So I cut them up into bite-sized pieces. And then when I'm done cutting them up, I put them back in the refrigerator. Then I tackle the whole prey quail. I cut these up into about seven pieces. Sometimes it's eight. That way Jericho can chew on two pieces a day. And I also trim the extra feathers around the neck and wings because sometimes Jericho gets turned off by that. He's like, wait, I didn't kill this, <laughs> what is this? So I like to make sure that some of the meat and bone is exposed and not hidden by all of those feathers. The other ingredients like heart and tripe I portion into smaller freezer-friendly jars about once a month. That way I don't have to thaw and refreeze, thaw and refreeze, thaw and refreeze. I grab the one jar, that's one week's worth of meals and I'm ready to go. Then I get all of the ingredients out on the food mat and portion it out. I mentioned before that I portion out Jericho's meals by day. I like to start with the whole prey chunks of quail, then put a small amount of tripe and heart and then finish up his daily portion with the chunks of meat. I like to do tripe in the beginning because I want him to have a little bit of that each day. I also give him one baby chick per week, so I just add that to the quail chunks and then finish off the remaining ounces with chunks of meat. I typically put two containers in the refrigerator, so that will be tomorrow's meal and then the day after's meal, and then everything else goes into the freezer. So you'll want to take out the food from the freezer and put it into your refrigerator at least 24 hours before you need it. Obviously your freezer and refrigerator is not the same as mine. Your climate might not be the same as mine. So adjust these times as necessary. After I feed Jericho breakfast, I take the next day's meal from the freezer and put it in the refrigerator. Now let's talk about how I feed Jericho. So I split up his daily portions equally between two meals. As I mentioned, I like that he has a whole prey chunk of quail in the morning and, and at night. That way he's chewing on something during both meals. Then I give him a little bit of tripe and a little bit of the chunks of meat. If I'm using ground meat, I like to keep it in a small chunk so that he actually chews it. Chewing on ground food isn't the same as chewing on meaty bones, but chewing something is better than chewing nothing. I also give Jericho one raw egg yolk each week, and you can check out the benefits of doing that and how to do it in this video right over Mia. Thanks for watching.